Ladies and gentlemen, Greg Warren is with us. Uh, he is a stand-up comedian who has appeared on CMT, Comedy Stage, NBC's Last Comic <laughs> Standing, Late Night with Seth Meyers, The Late Late Show, and Comedy Central Presents. His upcoming special, The Salesman, tells the story of his post-college phase when he sold Jif and Pringles for Procter & Gamble, which eventually led to his decision to become a full-time comedian. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Greg Warren is with us. Hi, Greg. Hey, Jimmy, how you doing? Now, Greg, I'm doing great. Now, Greg, I watched your special last night, and it is hilarious. Oh, thanks, buddy. Uh, it means a lot, man. Let's, uh, you know what? I wanted to actually go full screen on this part, but I can't go full screen because I have him on the second computer. So I'm just going to have to play it like this. So here we go. I'm going to play it. Here's a, little, <clears throat> here's a little tease from it. It was very funny. And, Greg, you know what? I've seen all Greg's uh, specials. I was at the taping of his last one uh, before this. And uh, it was great. Also, this is your best work, Greg. I will say this is by this is the oh, most I love powerful. You, I love you. It is very. It's like you hammered the whole the whole special. He hammered all the way through. Here's a little bit of it. You know what I'm talking about? The organic peanut butter. It, it's got like an inch of oil on the top of it. it. Looks like a science project on the grocery shelves. Well, Greg, that's how peanut butter naturally settles. Well, then cover it up. Nobody wants to see that. <laughs> Greg, your peanut butter has preservatives in it. That's why it doesn't do that. Yeah, that's exactly why it doesn't do that. <laughs> Maybe we're trying to preserve people's appetites, right? Like, <laughs> Greg, you just take a knife and you stir the jar and the oil goes away. Oh, now I'm supposed to help you make the peanut butter? <laughs> why don't you just hand me a bag of peanuts and a hammer next time? I'll smash them up myself. <laughs> me eater, you maker. <laughs> Greg Warren from his new special, The Salesman, which can be found on YouTube, right? Where, where, do, where should people go? It's uh, it's on YouTube. It's uh, um, That's where I watched it. it. Yeah, it's it's on uh, my buddy Nate Bargatze uh, directed it. It's on his uh, Nate, Nate directed Land it? channel. Yeah, Nate directed it. I haven't Kurt. seen yeah, it in a yeah. while. Okay. Yeah, you and Nate were buddies in New York, right? You guys all ran. They used to crew. open for me. We went on the road a lot. Yeah, yeah, man. Oh, look at that. Small world, huh? He's doing much better than me now. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> He's doing uh, much better than all of us put together. Guys, funny, clean put comment. together. Yeah, put together. Ticket. Yeah, Nate yeah. Bargatze's playing like giant stadiums now and stuff. Um, do you really work for Procter and Gamble? Greg? He did. Ten years, Kurt. Uh, okay, and, can uh, I ask you this? Because this is one from when I was a kid. This is one of Jehovah's Witness, but it was an urban legend that went around that the Procter, I guess Procter and Gamble went on Phil Donahue or like you know some talk show and announced they worship the devil. Yeah, and is... Donnie was like, don't you think Christians are going to be mad about that? And they're like, and, and they've put a little devil symbol on the Procter and Gamble bottle. No. And uh, this is people. This said is this. all this is all uh, not true. Uh, are you sure? Kurt, You're telling me I'm the positive. original Procter and Gamble were not on Donahue announcing that they were not. This was all made up by the Amway Corporation, who sold a lot of oh, soap powder. That's why I asked. It, they, 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 Amway, of course, sells a lot of soap, and they went after Procter and Gamble, who makes the superior soap, Tide. Uh, uh, cheer yeah. these sort of detergent. Jimmy, I don't know what you're laughing about. These are better products. Okay. And what they meant, they said, it, if you look at, it used to be a man in the, a moon man with 13 stars. And they said that was devilish. The 13 stars were for the 13 colonies. That was our logo. And if you looked carefully in the curls of the man's beard, they said you could see 666. It's preposterous. Well, uh, doesn't it just mean America's the devil then? <laughs> Well, you know, you guys think what you want, but it's, you know, they <laughs> got themselves in. People said this with, a, I remember a sister at the King Mall telling my mom this with a straight face. Now, now Greg, you worked for Procter & Gamble and you're in your, what, early 30s when you quit comedy? So you quit, you know, you quit Procter & Gamble, which was a great yeah, that's job. that's when I met you, Jim. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we we had an acting class together. I think that's how we met, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, no, no, we met on the road. I think it was San Antonio. Yeah, or you met on some... the road, and then you were in their class Oh, together. that's what I was reading that book on uh, philosophers, and I mispronounced Camus' name, and you'll never let me forget it. What'd you say? I did Camus. Well, oh. Jimmy came in, and he was uh, he was he he felt pretty proud of himself because he he'd, he'd, he'd just sort of discovered philosophy, and he uh, we were in the <laughs> condo together, I think, in El Paso, and he was uh, – just it's like he's like me basically. When I read a book, I want to lord it over everybody that I know. <laughs> yeah. And and uh, Jimmy told me, uh, and I had had not read a lot of uh, Camus, but I remember him from French class. And uh, Jimmy said, 
uh, he said, Craig, uh, th- what what Camus was trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, Jimmy, Jimmy Camus. He goes, yeah, Camus, Greg, uh, G- Camus, you, you don't understand. But what I go, <laughs> would that by any chance have been Camus, Jim? <laughs> <laughs> You're such an asshole. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's watch. Here's some more stand up comedy from uh, Greg Warren's new special. Let's watch a little bit. If you get a piece of paper in the mail and it's got a picture of a scissors on it, just know. No, let me ask this. No, let me. Oh I want to set God. this up. I have to set this up because oh it's God. too short of a clip. So set this up, Greg. About you were talking about what? What? What do they give you a perforate when they want you to cut stuff? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So, so um, it's me complaining about n- nothing, but it's it, 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 it strikes me. You you remember when you used to get an insurance card? Like they would send you like a plastic card, yeah, and it looked like a credit card, and you put it in your wallet, and you, and and you felt like a man, yeah. You know? And 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 they don't they'd say they're going to send you an insurance card. It's like yeah, we sent you an insurance card. It's not a it's a piece of paper. It's a piece of paper. It they is. send you a piece of paper, Jim, and it's got a picture of a scissors on it. No. No, you you cut it. I'm not going to cut it. Not, not not I paid you $3500. You can you can you can cut it. I'm not going to and if I do cut it, I'm not cutting on that line. I'll cut whatever shape I I, I want to cut. The cops going to pull me over and be like, "Can I see your insurance?" Swan, is that a swan son? Did did you did did you did you make a swan? Yeah. So here's the rest of that bit. If you get a piece of paper in the mail and it's got a picture of a scissors on it, just know you're doing business with some greedy (laughs) dirt bags. (laughs) At least back in the day, they did a thing called perforation. Perforation. Remember that? That was their way of saying, hey, we're not going to cut it, but we'll get you started. You know, it was was a fair deal. Each side gave a little bit. You felt like you were being treated like a customer. There is no more perforation. It doesn't exist. The only thing left that's perforated is toilet paper. And I'm telling you right now, if Charmin starts putting scissor pictures on their product, I'm going to have a real problem with that. And the crowd goes wild. Now, Jim, I do want to point out, and and Kurt and Steph, uh, Charmin, another Procter & Gamble a product. Uh, oh, <laughs> look at that. Yeah. They really do make the qual- quality is in their corner. Oh, that's not Procter & Gamble, is it? Well, I, I don't know. No, that, no. I heard they we, worship we, the we, devil. That's all I know. What's their What's their <laughs> slogan? What's Procter & Gamble's Kurt, slogan? Uh, you're looking at a lawsuit, okay? <laughs> like, uh, like, Amway, I can't believe it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We want to go, Kurt. Call Amway and see what happens when you run your mouth like this. No, okay, Amway. Because when I drove with my buddy in high school, we we were seventeen, and he goes, "Hey, come to my house later. I got a business proposition for you." He goes, "And dress oh, up. Man. Wear something nice. Dress up." Yeah, I'm like, we're seventeen and stupid, by the way. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> I go to his house. It's all these people from my church and a a guy in a white suit and like white hat, <laughs> like the monorail guy from The Simpsons. Really. And I'm like, it was Amway. I was like, I, first of all, I thought my friend wanted me to suck his dick. I thought that's where this is going. <laughs> and, I, and then this guy proceeded to explain Amway, and he would mention other brands. Okay, first he explained the business, which it's the grape cluster system. So he basically drew a pyramid, but it was upside down and made out of grapes. <laughs> and then he would talk about all the other brands, like Crest, you know, mm-hmm. you're going to sell your... Yeah, I, I suspected it wasn't legitimate. Rest is a Procter and Gamble brand. I I can assure you, uh, they had nothing to do with that. Uh, <laughs> well, he would go, "Don't use crust." He, like he would screw yeah, up the yeah, names. It's just a step yeah. away from saying that one worships the devil. Uh-huh. It's like saying ivermectin's horse paste. Yes, yeah. Uh, yeah, they did that stuff. Uh, my buddy, when I was like just out of college and and starting with P and G, my friend tried to get me involved in Amway and. Uh, he had me and my friend Marcus and Toby over, and it was a similar thing. Come on over, guys. I need to talk to you about a, a business idea. <laughs> and this and here's was here's was the opening line. He's like, you know, you guys, uh, you're you're in your early twenties. Didn't you think by now uh you'd be racing Ferraris with your friends? <laughs> <laughs> and I I believe and you all three too. of us, all of the three of us are like, nah, man. <laughs> and, and then and then his, his whole sales pitch sort of fell apart. <laughs> yeah, well, the business, if you think about it for three seconds, like, you know, let's take an honest business, like buying crack cocaine from a crack dealer. You give them money and they give you crack. They don't go, 
I'm going to give you crack, and now you have to sell crack to your friends and family <laughs> yeah. in order to There's just more get honor this thing the, you want. The you have to enter business, the crack yeah. business to be able yeah. to buy crack. Yeah. Yeah, there's more honor in that. Amway's yeah. still around, by the way. Amway's still still going. I looked them up. They are they are still around. There's more honor in OnlyFans than most of these jobs. <laughs> so wait, we have one. I have one more uh, hilarious clip from Greg, Greg Warren. Let's hear. Let's see what it is. Sir, do you have your birth certificate? Okay, uh, so now, so now uh, he does uh, this hilarious uh, uh, bit. He does this hilarious <laughs> bit about how he never. I'm the same way. I'm exactly the same way. Oh, you never keep track of. Go, go ahead, Greg. You set it up. Uh, well, no, you just, I, I don't, I'm, I'm not a responsible person when I lose things, especially <laughs> important documents. Based on, I'm a, the DMV, I'm a constant disappointment to them. You know? <laughs> okay. Should I start it here? Yeah, sure. Do you have your birth certificate? My birth certificate? <laughs> that document is 54 years old. I also don't have the Declaration of Independence. <laughs> <laughs> you can get a new birth certificate. You know, you just got to write to the state, but you can get one. I lose them all the time. I'm like, can I just get a book of 50? Is there, is there a birth certificate of the month club or something I could join? In? No shit. Well, Bill Gates wanted to give you guys a handy chip under the skin with all your ID and you spit on him. Yeah, exactly. I mean, Kurt, I talk about that in, later in the special, like where. You know that it seems like a great thing, wouldn't it be if, if we had one of those, right? Uh, yeah, like theoretically, if it was not the Bill Gates Corporation and yeah, every there, maniac I, had it. I actually see a couple of downsides to it, but <laughs> 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 but yeah, definitely it would help you with your documents for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'd be make a lot easier coming in and out of customs stuff like that. You mean? Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah certainly. Yeah, certainly. Yeah. Certainly, and that, that would never be used for a nefarious reason. I don't know. After coming through three years of COVID, I can't see how the government would, or the people in the establishment would ever use something like that against you. I'd like to, everything about me attached to one thing, one central thing. <laughs> yeah. My money, my housing, my ability to buy cars or travel, work. Yes. Well, Greg Warren, it's uh, honest. Was uh, I watched it last night. It was loved it. I had such a great time. It's a hammer. Oh, it, thanks, you it's guys. A really a ha it's that special really hammers. You know, I just have to say, I was listening to Eckhart Tolle today, and he was talking about that voice in your head that people have. There's always this voice oh, that God. that when you do your voice in your head, it's fantastic. It's just fantastic. Yeah, that was uh, Freddie, who Jimmy, you know, right? Yes. Yeah, so you, <laughs> he's doing this voice. No, you know There's, him. So yeah, this guy Freddie Demarco used to run the club in Columbia, uh, wherever. Where is it? Missouri. Missouri. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was a character, and I like Freddie a lot. He, you know, uh, he's a ball buster for sure. He was one of those guys who told me, "Go, you know, you think stand up comedy is an art form? Then why, why is it on a, on the wall?" He said that. Why is it on a frame on the wall? I'm like, well, there's different kinds of art, Freddie. I mean, that's one. I would kind need of a art. day and a half to ponder that. Yeah. <laughs> What's the sound of one hand clapping? Why isn't comedy on the wall? <laughs> So, uh, so this uh, is the voice in that, but he taught. He has a very distinct speaking pattern. Jimmy, so what, what are you doing, man? I told you to do forty three minutes, man. I told <laughs> you to do forty three minutes. You did forty seven, man. I got, I got, I got a bar business downstairs. I got to make a living. I mean, you're, you're, all the broads are down there. You're killing me, man. You're killing me. I mean, what, what, Craig, what, Craig. Greg, what are you doing, man? What are you doing? <laughs> You're killing me, Greg. What, you're going to sell peanut butter, Greg? <laughs> yeah, you, Greg. Procter and Gamble, Greg. Why don't you just, Greg, put a gun in your mouth and get it over with. Just get it over. That's what he told me when I told him I was going to sell. Greg, put a gun in your mouth and get it over with. Jesus Christ. You're gonna, I used to go, when I was in the military academy when I was a freshman. Go back to West Point, Greg. You're, you're a lot more fun than you were at Procter and Gamble. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Killing me, man. Where He's was this? Me. Greg, so Columbia, uh, Missouri. There oh, was whoa. a club there. What was it called? Deja Vu. Yeah. It was called Deja Vu Comedy Club. And it was upstairs of a bar. It was a nice space. It was a nice enough space anyway. And uh, I remember I worked for him a couple times. It was fun. Did you ever do Stanford and Sons? And, uh, I Kansas did Stanford and oh, yeah. Sons. Yeah. Stanford yeah. and yes, Sons. Yes, I did Stanford oh, yeah. and Sons. Everybody, the whole, the rumor was, oh, oh, the mob owns this. Yeah, they, the mob, it's, just because it's a criminal. I can't remember what comic his uh, his son was like. His comic his uh, his wife's mom married that guy uh, Stanford Craig, and he said he gave her crabs twice. 
<laughs> Give me crabs once. Shame on you. <laughs> Give me crabs Ray, twice. No, none of those guys are alive anymore, man. All three of the guys. But they look so healthy, camp. though. The three yeah. guys who used to own that club? <laughs> yeah, yeah, the three brothers, yeah. they were Really? Uh, you know, Craig was a guy. He was always really good to me. Me too, and man. He was a guy. He, the, yeah, did you, he was probably... He was one of those guys. I got in the car the first time I met him when he picked me up for radio, and he just started talking, and I was like, "All right, this there's got to this is lies. This, but if <laughs> yeah. but if if thirty percent of it is true, it's remarkable. Like like, <laughs> like he did do a lot of remarkable. He did like he, he did the stuff that sounds it. like a rich kid in a city with a politically connected dad might get into. That's the stuff he yeah, did. He, it's he, not unbelievable well, he, at all. He, he did pose as an FBI agent and stole from drug dealers. Well, and, his partner he, was a real criminal and he yeah. was like a rich kid who was a jerk off. It's not unbelievable. The book is very interesting. Oh, there's a book about it? Yeah. yeah, yeah he king, had a book that sting. he sold at the club. I read the whole goddamn thing very oh, quickly. Oh, really? I, didn't, I, I read missed... that book in one shit, dude. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but the thing is, you it's not unbelievable. You have a very strong asshole. Yeah. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's not unbelievable. It's like the classic... There's a lot of these guys where like they want to tell you brag about how they used to rob drug dealers and like so you just I sympathize more with the drug dealer than you dude. <laughs> like I don't think you're a good guy. I don't think I ever met him. I guess the weekend I worked there, nobody was there because I I, I don't know I don't have any stories about him. He was very entertaining. I only worked there. He, he one was time. man. It was it, he was a it, it, man. He's a guy though. If you went and did radio with him, he just didn't. He wanted to be part of the radio thing, and then he would coach you. He, on he radio. actually helped me because I hated doing those radio because I like the ones where you just talk and yeah. a lot of them they want you to set up your jokes yeah. and that's it which I didn't understand and so he actually explained that to me which I did not it sounds like stupid now I, I like the setups I, I like that more because well, I, 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 I had a great time on the local radio because I didn't attempt to have a normal conversation yes. with the morning guy oh yeah the one the person that taught me about morning radio was Jimmy Dore basically oh. Really? What because a- I remember I called him. I was like, Jimmy, man, I'm because I used to open for Jim and I started headline and I was like, Jimmy, man, I'm doing some of these. Ra- some of them are great, but some of them, man, it's just this kid and you have seven minutes and he won't stop. He just starts talking and then he asks you dumb questions. Jimmy's like, Craig, what are you doing? He's like, What are you doing? I'm like, what do you mean? He goes, just just, just do your ass. Do your act. I'm like, what do you what do you mean? Do my he goes, I go, what if they don't ask me? He goes, it doesn't matter at all what they <laughs> ask you it doesn't matter so so it would seriously and it worked they would be like so uh what do you think about britney spears i'd be like britney spears man when i was in high school i uh, played the clarinet and i wrestled on the <laughs> 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 exactly right and as long as jimmy, they laugh jimmy at the taught end, me how to do that man you steamroll them <laughs> nope and as long as there's a punchline at the end which there is and then they're gonna laugh no one cares what the question was all they care is that they're laughing now no yeah and, that's it was. It wasn't even close to being like like. I didn't even try to link him. I just. I just repeat. Britney Spears. Yeah, man. Uh, I was at the airport, and uh, the, other, the other thing. I. I mean, I looked up to Jimmy when I. And he. He taught me some stuff. And when I moved out to LA, I started doing some auditions, and I got this hosting audition. And uh, Jimmy. Uh, Jimmy says. Uh, he goes, listen, he goes, what is it? I go, yeah, yeah. I go, I got, they gave me like these jokes, these, this copy. And uh, Jimmy goes, don't worry about that. He goes, just, just write your own copy. He goes, it's a lot better. Don't use the copy that, uh, that they, that they wrote, write your own jokes for the host copy works every time. So I get in there and I go, <laughs> I start doing the thing. And the guy lets me go for like three minutes. He goes, Hey man, what are you doing? I'm like, <laughs> Oh, I just, you know, I just thought I'd write some of my own. So he goes, don't do that, man. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> I'm like, Jimmy, man. <laughs> the only ones I ever got were the ones I wrote my own jokes for. All the rest of them, I never got them. So to me, that's what I'm doing. I'm like, I'm not reading this. If, if it yes. stinks, I'm not reading it. I do. I, that, that's what Ellen I would. Ellen DeGeneres oh. doesn't take that. <laughs> Ellen DeGeneres like, I got to say this nonsense. The, whenever I got a gig, it was because I rewrote the jokes. But anyway, that's why that was my advice to you. I'm sorry. Did you get that? Did you get that? No, for- Jimmy. No, man. <laughs> <laughs> I got okay. a voiceover job doing that. I got a voiceover job do. doing I that. I just too. said how I wanted to say it, and they, yes. they took they re, reconfigured it around me. And so my problem was, hey, I I didn't know how to act right. It's it's a real skill. Yeah, well, right? voice acting is a lot easier. Voice acting is a lot easier. 
<laughs> uh, but anyway, but Greg and I were in the, we had the, there was an Italian guy with a heavy, he was an Italian <laughs> soap star. <laughs> he was an Italian soap star, was in our acting class trying to make it in America. And he had to do a scene from um, True Romance. True Romance. It was. Uh, Wait, which scene? Yeah, that one. The, the scene that you're that, thinking that of. That one. The best scene. The best scene. I heard yes. Dennis Hopper improv. He, no, <laughs> no, you say that I'm. A, and I can't say it. I can't say it. No, we can't do this scene, Jimmy. But it's. Yeah, he says a very powerful racial slur and has no idea that he's saying it. And he said it 50 times. <laughs> yeah, and no, Jimmy. I, did he pick the it, scene? It, no, it I was, mean, if they assigned that scene, they assigned that scene to him, and we could go ahead, Greg, keep telling. He he was a he said that he uh he uh he say, he say, and he says it in this sort of very high pitched Italian. He says it as if he's saying the word shoe, yeah, or you know, but he's saying hamburger. the n word, but he's saying it like it's not. He calls he has me no hamburger. idea what it means. He's calling me hamburger. I'm like, no, you hamburger, right? I'm not yeah, yeah, hamburger. Yeah, yeah. You <laughs> hamburger. hamburger. By the way, isn't that scene? <laughs> Uh, calling an Italian racist slur, so he had to say it about himself yes, in, a, yes, in a Super yes, Mario accent? Yes. Here's the thing also, Mario. Kurt, he was an extremely good actor. He didn't, like, he was like an Italian soap opera, like, act, he was a good actor, and he and he had no idea. So Jimmy and I are up in the back <laughs> in tears, just I tears. Really, it's the hardest I ever laughed. And the and the rest of the acting class thinks that we're jerks. We're like, no, no, like this is this is this is hilarious. he doesn't know what he's saying. It was the funniest thing I, I ever. Honest, I I never tried to he, not laugh. He thought harder. it was totally like my mama used to make eggplant. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, worse. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, I I miss you, Greg. I hope we get I to miss hang you, out, buddy. I hope we get to hang out sometime soon. I'll be coming to St. Louis hopefully soon. I missed it oh, yeah. last year. I missed St. Louis last year. We're going to get it this year for sure. Yeah, they lo they love you here, man. I did. Uh, here's how much they love Jimmy. Like in St. Louis, I did a, I, I did a guest spot on his show. And uh, you know how comedy club waitresses are. Uh, they they The last thing they ever want to do is go to a comedy club. And there's this girl. She's she's I love her. She's one of my friends, Lish, who used to work at the St. Louis Funny Bone for like 20 years and mm -hmm. she left and we have never seen her since she just she just never showed up and i go to jimmy's show and lish is there and i'm like <laughs> what are you doing here she's like i'm a jimmy fan i want to see jimmy i'm like well, all right then i at that moment i sort of understand that the, the, the power of jimmy like i was like you got lish to the club man <laughs> That's the power of the Jimmy Dore show. It really it reaches. Yeah, Jimmy, let me tell you something. If Patty retires, she's not coming to your show. <laughs> she, I got to tell you something. She ain't retiring. Yeah, that's true. She won't. Yeah. All right, everybody. Greg Warren, go watch his new special. It's called The Salesman, and it's on YouTube. Go Greg Warren, The Salesman on YouTube, and it comes up. And believe me, it's uh, it'll be one of your favorite specials ever. It's one of the funniest things I've seen in a long time. Great job, Greg Warren. Uh, thanks, Jimmy. Uh, great to see you, buddy. Thanks, Steph. Th thanks, Kurt. It was we'll hilarious. See you guys. Okay, we'll yeah. talk to you again soon. Check out my new stand-up special, COVID Lies Are Funny, at JimmyDoor.com. Only $10, become a premium member. We're going to be on tour in Northampton, Massachusetts, Syracuse, Cohoes, New York, Hartford, Los Angeles, Bakersfield, California, Baltimore, Maryland, and San Francisco, California. Plus, do we say Chicago? There's lots of stuff. Go to JimmyDoor.com for a link for tickets. See you there.